Blaster has really been deafening everybody in that <laughs> tunnel. I was down there earlier. The music wasn't bad, I must say, though. You could have danced to it, I think, Andy. No, you haven't seen me dancing. <laughs> oh, I, I wonder if they're coming out, Manchester City, and usually teams wait for each other. But it looks like uh, Manchester City are on their way, and they're not waiting at anyone. Well, it doesn't look like they're going to hang around with Wimbledon, or will they? They're just waiting. That's Kieran Barrett, the referee, cup final referee, of course. He's saying, come on to the Wimbledon boys, let's get out there. And maybe getting some last-minute instructions from Joe Kinnear. That's the scene at the new-look Selhurst Park, looking down at what was the old Sainsbury's end of the ground. And here they come, come Wimbledon in that new-look <laughs> strip this season. And they're pretty hyped up. There's a kind of siege mentality about this squad. Wimbledon against the world, but it served them very, very well indeed. Just the one defeat this season, and they're the only side in the Premiership who've scored in every game. So, Wimbledon against Manchester City is our live game on Sky Sports tonight. So live action, don't go away, it's on Sky Sports tonight. Wimbledon against Manchester City, the whole match here on Sky Sports. Welcome back, let's join our match commentators, Andy Gray and Ian Dark. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Kieran Barrett from Coventry is tonight's referee, the FA Cup final referee. And he had a run for his money too, didn't he, with the replay between Arsenal and Sheffield Wednesday and extra time as well. It's due to be his last season on the list. Manchester City, despite uh, we have a kind of two-tone blue arrangement here, no clash of colours, I think you'll agree. And it's City who get us underway here. And Steve McMahon getting an early touch. Flickcroft, who's been switched back into midfield, he has been playing right back in recent matches. And Roger Joseph touching it back to Hans Segers, the long-serving Wimbledon goalkeeper. He's one, of the best. Yeah. Sorry, he's one of the best, Hans Sager, you mentioned him, at dealing with the pass back and the ball back to him. Very confident. I hope that's not a kiss of death for him tonight, though. It's away by Keith Curl, the Manchester City skipper, of course, played 93 league games for Wimbledon. He was having a real old joke with Fashionu and the rest of them in the tunnel before the game. But the serious stuff is underway now. Here's the youngster making his debut, Richard Edgehill. We wish him well. On to Sheeran. Lovely touch by Quinn. And Sheeran still attacking it. Kimball got it away, but only as far as flip drop. Sheeran with the just little flick there. Good idea. And this is played long for Fashionu who says he feels his fittest in years. Notice the red boots still in action. Dean Holdsworth and Edgehill. The challenge is fair, says the referee. Alan Kimball. Holdsworth on to Warren Barn. Now here's Robbie Earle, talented player in the middle of the field, and he has a kind of free roll to get forward. Watch for that tonight. Former Port Vale player. Scales getting that away for Wimbledon. Brian Horton has been absolutely delighted with the attitude of the Manchester City players through all the boardroom turmoil going on at Main Road. This is a real tempting outlet for City early on, this right back area. Twice already, Richard Edgehill has been able to walk in acres of space here and receive the ball, and there he is again. If he's confident on the ball, this is the kind of debut you'd like. Flickcroft playing this one long, aimed towards Quinn. It's almost as if the City boys were trying to give him a few nice, easy early touches, wasn't it? Edgehill. He can come here again, Steve McMahon, if he wants. It's away by Kimball, the £175,000 buy from Cambridge, here's Earl making the run. Sanchez to Vinnie Jones. 
and then Joseph knocking this one forward. He's really impressed Joe Kinnear as Alan Kimball since his signing from Cambridge, playing in the left back slot, getting forward. And uh, he says he's just the ticket for me, Joe Kinnear. That's up towards Quinn, Vinnie Jones in there. Fashionu to run against his old mate Curl, perhaps. Barton is the outlet. Barton once more. Fashionu. That's nice football from Wimbledon. Touch just let him down. John Fashion is there. Shearer and then Flitcroft, the two exciting youngsters that City have linking up there. Kernahan on to Sheeran. Manchester City who've hit three goals in both of their last two games, away at Swindon and at home to Queen's Park Rangers. And confidence lifted. It's Jones in very quickly on the debutant Edgehill. Just wonder if he'd spotted how much room Richard Edgehill had to settle down early in the match and Vinny just saying, well, welcome to the big time. <laughs> it, won't be the, it won't be the first or last. I had a little chat to Richard Edgehill just before the kickoff, Andy, and he didn't seem at all phased by the idea that it would be his debut. He said he'd been told yesterday by Brian Horton he'd got used to the idea and he was really looking forward to it, Wimbledon or not. Now, here's Sheeran. Quinn's there with him, he goes alone. Scales with the challenge. John Scales, who of course was linked with a big money move to Liverpool in the summer. They've made uh, several attempts, as I understand it, to sign him, but it's never really happened. That's Scales coming in again there. There was an offside flag up anyway. Yorkshire lad from Harrogate. In tonight's programme, Joe Kinnear, the Wimbledon manager, saying everybody interprets this as physical, but we aim to show that we can play a little bit as well. So let's see. Jones wins that, the tenacious McMahon with the header. Now it's Fitzroy Simpson up to Sheeran. This is the Dutchman Grunendijk. He's got a lovely sweet left foot. The one, the one thing you can bet about the Groningen is technically will be excellent, Ian. Former Ajax player. Here he is again. McMahon, nice touch. Sheeran. Thought about the shot. This is Fitzgerald. Aimed towards Holdsworth, who hasn't really got into his goal-scoring form of last season yet this year. Just one in seven games, Dean Holdsworth. Well, he does look confident, doesn't he, the youngster? Edgehill, that's a good ball, too, to Quinn. What a good turn, and Scales pulling him back. Now, what's the referee going to give there? Because Quinn seemed to be through on goal. Well, that's a, I tell you, it's a difficult one for the referee there. Because Niall Quinn throws him totally here. John Scales, I think, thinks he's going to knock it back, but you can see Niall Quinn turns very well for a big lad, and he's through. And John Scales could think himself lucky we're only six minutes into the game. Because that card, well, I don't think we'd have been surprised had it been red. Could have been, couldn't it? He escapes with yellow. Now, Alphonse Grunendijk is looking to curl one perhaps with the left foot here. Flick off there as well with McMahon. <laughs> Steve McMahon's trying to organise it, but I think Grunendijk fancy picked up himself. Grunendijk, and out to Fitzroy Simpson. It's a bright start from City. Very bright. They've looked very confident, passed it about very well. The Wimbledon don't close the ball quick enough. Fit Roy Simpson takes two touches. One there, and he's shot, and he's still able to get a shot in there. You really have to close the ball down quicker. I think we saw yesterday, Eric Cantona, that free kick. Was it closed down quick enough? And Arsenal paid a heavy price for it. Curl winning that one in the air, aimed towards Simpson, here's Vinnie Jones, and Earl making that run that we were talking about through from the midfield, and they've got to watch that. Good adjustment from Alan Kernahan. It's a difficult run for a midfield player to track that, Ian, but if you've got two centre-backs that are aware and are watching the play ahead of them, 
they can usually deal with runs from midfield. Ooh, Vinnie Jones in very hard there on Gronendijk. Gronendijk was a substitute for Ajax in the UEFA Cup final when they played Torino last season. He was uh, coveted by Leo Bainharker when he was the Ajax coach, but uh, fell out of favour when they changed coaches and was in the reserves most of last year. But you're talking about a guy here who's been setting up goals for the likes of Dennis Bergkamp. There's a space again, Ian, on the right. And this young Ed Schill. Uh, good start by the youngster, and he gets the cross in too. Simpson, away by Robbie Earl. But uh, what a start this 18-year-old boy has made Richard Edgehill he's a little bit like Terry feeling from a distance as well but they're going to have to do something Wimbledon they, they can't allow someone who looks as comfortable on the ball as Edgehill this amount of time and space because he'll eventually connect with someone like Quinn in there and Greg Wells long ball seeming to be to nobody in particular Local boy from uh, Oldham, brought through the city youth system, Edge Hill. Fashion who to Holdsworth. Fashion, good flick on. Kernahan with the important interception with his head. Long for Quinn, and of course that's a tried and trusted route of attack for Manchester City always, the long ball to Quinn and then knocked down hopefully into the path of Sheeran or one of the midfield players coming through. There have been times I felt over the years that now Quinn's been there, when they perhaps have overdone that tactic. But certainly they started tonight as if they're quite prepared to mix it up. Look for Quinn when he's available, but when they've had time to pass it, they've also looked to pass it around. Good interception by Flipcroft, Gronen Dyke. And Sheeran is going to catch that one. I mean, when you look at their midfield quartet here, that they've got in Flipcroft, McMahon, Gronen Dyke, and Simpson, they're all very, very comfortable on the ball. So it would seem crazy to bypass them all the time. All talented and all comfortable to take the ball under pressure. It's an interesting point you make there, Andy, because I saw them in a game at, I think it was Coventry last year, when Coventry had them on the rack, and then they started pushing the ball about, and they pulled the game round and ended up winning it. Fashionu back to Kimball. Interesting-looking ball. Kernahan doing nothing wrong so far, but this is broken to Barton here now. Danger. Fashionu was in there, and it was Keith Curl who got there ahead of his mate to concede the corner. Good defending from Keith Curl. Gronendijk just slips. Don't think he intended it to go there at all, but Warren Barton pounced on it. And you can see there how important Curl's header was with Fashionu right on his shoulder. So the corner kick for Wimbledon and the left-footed Kimball coming across, maybe to win swing one. Dangerous from these sort of situations, Wimbledon always City survive this time. And maybe they can break with Flickcroft. Just a little bit too anxious to go forward quickly. Gary Flickcroft miscontrolled the, the ball. Sheeran and Flickcroft. The challenge by Jones and now Fashionu. And McMahon with the challenge. Play on, says the referee. Edge Hill long for Quinn. Scales with the clearance. Well, there's something about Wimbledon, their comradeship, their determination, their devotion to this unfashionable, poorly supported club. And in a way, it's all turned into a kind of great strength for them. Quinn, interesting knock on. Scales getting it away. Manchester City look quite buoyant here at the start. Edge Hill. This kid's had a great start. 
<laughs> to his debut. Well, he looks as if he's been playing there for a couple of seasons, doesn't he? But it's as I said, Ian, there's no one in front of him. Huge amount of space for him to play in. And if you're comfortable and you want the ball, then he must be desperate to get the ball every time. There's Brian Horton, who once scored against Manchester City, a very famous goal for Luton, a goal that sent Manchester City down. He was hoping the City fans might kind of forget that, I think. Still doing well there. Tony Coton to McMahon. This is David Brightwell, the younger of the two Brightwell brothers. He's been getting a bit of a run in the side lately. Look at this wall again. And a bit of space I again. I myself, but I mean, you just can't allow it. Eventually, they'll get punished in. This is the talented Warren Barton. Joe Kinnear, the Wimbledon manager, has been doing a good job with the club. Of course, they were really flirting with relegation for the first half of last season, but made a big climb up the table to 12th. And it's an interesting statistic, you know, Andy. A lot of people have Wimbledon down as perennial strugglers. The lowest they've ever finished is 13th. Is Brightwell. Now, Laurie Sanchez. Grunendijk with that nice left foot of his. And I think that's just going to skid off the turf and even the quick Sheeran won't catch it. Gary Flickcroft playing an important part in, in creating this area of space down in front of us because he's, he's tucking himself in, infield. He's not playing wide. And that's given Alan Kimball a problem because he's not so sure to go with Flickcroft or whether to stay wide and go and meet young Edgehill as he comes forward. I wonder whether Wimbledon just might reorganise a little bit. We'll see. Carnahan in his first game for Manchester City. And here he is again, the Republic of Ireland defender. Flickcroft, who's been absolutely outstanding in the last couple of games when I've seen City, was voted the player of the year by the City fans last year. Curl here. That's a good challenge by Vinnie Jones. Won the ball well. His fashion out. I'll pass some comment on that. I don't want to upset the big man. Corner flag was scared to death, Andy. Corner flag was happy. It was nowhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, those, it's those boots, isn't it? Well, he scored three with them this year. But that never looked like being another. <laughs> John Fashionu, TV star, businessman, martial arts expert, footballer, you name it. Penthouse flat overlooking lords. He's quite a character and they love him around here. Oldsworth sneaking in there and Curl doing a good shielding job to make sure that the corner wasn't given away. Good defending. A lot of defenders would have been rushed into clearing that, but Keith Curl was in total control of the situation. Wimbledon made an awful lot of money, of course, when they sold Curl for two and a half million pounds. Never forget Terry Phelan was sold between these two clubs for another two and a half million. And Wimbledon's markup on that was 2.4 million. So, um, they certainly... They like Manchester City then, don't they? They clearly do, don't they? One of Sam's favourite sides. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Dean Holdsworth had a great first season in the top flight. Brightwell here for Manchester City. That was lovely. This is Scott Fitzgerald. Scott Fitzgerald, the former captain of the uh, Republic of Ireland's under-21 side. He hopes that maybe he can get into Jack Charlton's World Cup thinking. Fashion who here, though, for Wimbledon. Out to Barton, looking to take on Brightwell. And David Brightwell doing well enough. Niall Quinn, oh, that's a good ball for Sheeran. 
Flitcroft breaking forward. Sheeran goes inside and he's robbed. Simpson makes something of it. And Edgehill not able to quite keep it in. That was poor appreciation of what lay around him from Mike Sheeran. It really was. Flitcroft had made a great run. Edgehill was joining him support. Completely, completely open. And that was about the worst option he could have chosen. Wimbledon nil, Manchester City nil here. Fashion who beats Kernahan in the air. Fashion who here! And plucked out of the air by Tony Coton, who's having a great season. Well, that was better than Fash, wasn't it? Hit that much better. What's good about this is Fash wins the header, but he doesn't hang around. Look, he's looking for the little knockdown. Holdsworth doesn't disappoint him. But Tony Coton is very happy to see this one go right down his throat. Much better. Fashion who really looks up for the job, I must say, tonight. Vinnie Jones in there, winning it in the air. And the header wide from Robbie Earl. That's a little illustration that they think about the game as well. Because Vinnie Jones has spotted the height of Edgehill. And now every free kick they've had, he's pulled on him to use the height advantage. Gronendijk tried to help him out there, but even he was unable to stop Jones winning it. This is probably the strongest side that Wimbledon have had since they arrived in the top flight. And uh, they think that they can finish in the top six this season if things go right and they steer clear of too many injuries and suspensions. Got some good kids coming through as well. One or two, like Fear and Tall Boys, have been already used this season. Now here's Curl, who thought about the free kick. Great, they wanted to push out. Keith Curl knew all about it. Dummy dumb. Now they can't come out second time. That's off Fashion Who's head. Can Sagers keep it in? A bizarre piece of play. <laughs> Remarkably, it doesn't go for the corner. Does it count as a pass back? Good question. <laughs> I thought Vinny got something on that, didn't he? He meant to do something with it. Whether it was a pass back, I don't know. Well, we've seen some bizarre decisions in that rule. Ashenu again, the red boots find the Kimball. One in the air by Brightwell. And McMahon is getting fouled. There's always a sort of lot of verbals out there when John Fashnu is playing, as uh, Sean Teal revealed to the press earlier on this season when uh, Fashnu apparently kept on calling him baby throughout the match. Must have been difficult for the Manchester City players, Andy, in the last couple of weeks with uh, all this business going on with Francis Lee and Swales and, and, and the rest of it. Well, from Monday to Fridays, I think it probably had a little effect on them, but if you asked every one of them, the, the best part of all this time has been the 90 minutes that they've been out in the pitch playing when they can totally concentrate on one thing, and that's the thing they all love doing most, playing the game in, rather than listening to all the talk about who's going to be the chairman, who's going to be in charge of the club. And that's showed tonight. That's a nice ball again by the youngster. Flitcroft here. And nobody attacking the near post. One of Andy's favourite hobby horses. Well, Mike Sheeran, I think, was pulling and pulling, waiting for the ball just to be pulled back to him. You know, had he gambled and just sprinted along with Gary Flitcroft, he may have got in there. And Sagers. Fashionu on, and Earl getting a touch onto it as well. It's interesting to see how teams adjust themselves to cope with, with Wimbledon style. I notice that Manchester City are quite happy to drop off as far as they want and, and challenge fashion holes within the air. I remember at Tottenham last year in a cup tie when Neil Ruddock was controlling a Tottenham back four. They decided to push up and say, well, if you're going to knock it over the top, we'll gamble it, we're quick enough to deal with that. And it worked very well for Tottenham that day. Laurie Sanchez, too long for Barton, who'd made an interesting run. Dung Agnelly from the right-hand side. 
This is Alphonse Grunendijk. And Joseph with the illegal challenge on Fitzroy Simpson. Simpson hasn't had too much of a look in so far. This is only his second start in the side tonight. Those uh, injuries we were talking about allowing him in. McMahon. Simpson once again. And the live wire, Sheeran. Manchester City being forced backwards by Wimbledon's tenacity and running. In this fixture last season, Manchester City won it. It was their only ever win at Wimbledon by a goal to nil. Scored by David White, whose uh, absence tonight is caused by an ankle injury. Quinn knocking this one on. And Kimball wearing number 35 doing the shielding. I think that's the highest number we've seen so far in this uh, squad system, 35. But it could be topped tonight by one of the subs, Gary Blissett. He's got 36. And the sub goalkeeper, Perry Digweed, is wearing number 37. Where will it end? I hope at the end of the season. <laughs> Good one, Andy. I think they might be thinking about it. We'll see. That's cool by Kernan. And free kick for Scales, who is not in agreement with Kieran Barrett's decision, you will gather. So awkward now, Quinn, to deal with. Because a lot of big lads don't jump very early in, but now Quinn is not in, in that category. He's one of these lads that, when he puts his mind to it, he can really climb as well, and that's what makes him such a awkward customer it's a real old confrontation that's going to be in the air all night between those two it's coming up again now and it's Quinn who wins this one Sheeran attacking it Fitzgerald got it away Sanchez still bouncing around awkwardly Scales scrambling it clear but only to McMahon and Kimball long for Holdsworth well that's another little cameo of what they look for Manchester City Quinn to win it in the air what I'm surprised is that there are not more runners off him. Mike Sheeran was a solitary runner off Niall Quinn there. And if I was a midfield player playing in the side that Niall Quinn played any in, then I would be gambling nine times out of ten that he's going to get a touch in it. He watches it comes in. Now take a gamble there, take a gamble. But there's only one of them, look. And it's Mike Sheeran. And there was a big gap for any of the other midfield players who stood at the edge of the box to run into. A very good piece of defensive play by Scott Fitzgerald in all of that. Earl on to Holdsworth. Earl's gone into the middle. Holdsworth with a good shot on the turn. Tony Coton is going to take something inspired to beat him the way he's been playing. He made what I reckon is the save of the season so far from Les Ferdinand in the last game. Good ball from Sanchez. And for Barton. He used to work in a firm of city accountants until he was rescued by non-league football. I think he was signed by Bobby Gould, who's with us tonight. But this is always worth trying on a night like tonight with such a slippy top. Because anything that bounces in front of a goalkeeper like that is going to make it very difficult for him. But Tony Corton dealt with it so easily. Wimbledon have a lot of men forward here. And this will be something they'll have worked on in training. The Vinnie Jones long throw. No, he goes short in the end. Now the cross. And nobody is there. Probably just a fraction too far out for Vinnie to launch it in there. Another five yards towards the, the byline. I think he would have chosen to throw in rather than trying to get it back to his feet there. Vinnie Jones, who is a stone lighter than he was last season. He's been uh, working at Lillishaw on the early season injury that kept him out of the side. He came back with a goal and he's looking very trim. Fashionu helping this on. Well read by Kernahan. Alan Kernahan was voted man of the match. Uh, twice running in appearances for the Republic of Ireland in Dublin. And another who hopes to be on the plane to the USA next summer. On by Simpson for Sheeran. Now Quinn. Simpson's cross. Flitcroft attacking. Oh, and a nasty blow on the head there for Kimball, I think it is. 
just caught by Flickcroft's boot or head or something anyway. That was his boot, Ian. It was, he was bending down for the ball. That's the problem. It was whipped in a vicious cross and it just tips. And you watch here, Kimball's head goes down. And he, he meets Flickcroft's foot. Very nasty, but brave defending. That's the one thing you say about that. Alan Kimball, who was uh, part of John Beck's Cambridge side that stormed through the leagues when they used to take all those uh, ice-cold showers before games. Andy, I bet he's glad he doesn't have to do that anymore. Well, he would have had one before the game today when he was warming up, wouldn't he? It was bucketing down just before kickoff. I don't know what's worse, the ice-cold shower or the ghetto blaster. Terry Burton there, chatting with Joe Kinnear. I think that the problem is this right back area. I'm sure that's what they're trying to do. I actually think they would like to push Kimball on a little bit. He is again, as I say, he's worried about Flickcroft, but he shouldn't because Laurie Sanchez should be able to take him in that midfield area. And Swimbledon unable to provide any real attacking threat down the left-hand side because of their formation. I think we've got a fair idea where this is going. Would the mixer be a fair guess? Kimball knocks it in long again. Fashion who's in there and on the turn. Just over the bar by Laurie Sanchez. The man who scored the most famous goal in Wimbledon's history in the FA Cup final at Wembley. Well, this just shows you that they don't necessarily have to win the header. What they want to do is stop the defenders clearing it properly. That's what Fashion who does then. And that's why the chance drops for Laurie Sanchez and he's been around this club long enough to know that if he hangs around fast when he's going up in the air that eventually something will drop his way he's been in good goal scoring form this year he's got a couple and I think he won £200 on a bet on himself uh, at Norwich City in the last game had a tenner on himself at 20-1 to 1, I think it was to score the game's first goal well it was the only goal nice little bonus isn't it now Kimball Again, aimed long, this time towards Fashionu, who gets there. Earl was attacking Coton there with the punch. But that's where Wimbledon really are very, very menacing indeed. Teams know about it, but knowing about it and being able to stop it are two quite different things. we are dealing percentages in those situations. If we put it in there often enough, then something's got to go our way. It's a little bit further forward, this throw in Ian. It wouldn't surprise me if Vinny elects to get this one right in there. Same towards Sanchez on the near post. Simpson stopped it getting there. Back in again by Jones, but only to the other number four, McMahon. That's not a good ball from him, though. Once again, Kimball. Too long for Sanchez. Well, let's have a look at that chance. I mentioned that Robbie Earl hadn't scored all season. Now, when you see the way that he commits himself here to this header, look at the eight. What is he? What, six inches away from meeting that? I'm amazed that he hasn't found the net. The one thing I'll guarantee, if he keeps getting in there like that, Ian, it won't be long before he does. Foul on Fashionu. Uh, I think we're going to have a booking here, maybe, for Brunendijk. Manchester City's first of the match, it's the second in all, John Scales hooked earlier on. Yeah, I mean, you can see quite a deliberate trip from Dornan Day, right under the referee's nose. Now, Wimbledon might fancy their chances here. Again, Kimball's been brought across to take it. Barton, and I think it hit Niall Quinn and goes for the corner. City under the cosh a little bit at the moment. That's what I mean about it, they do think about it as well. We've got everyone into that vein of thought that it's coming in here. We better get everyone in the six-yard box. And what do they do? They just make a little square pass to Warren Barton. Cross coming in. It's dropping around very dangerously indeed. Fashnu was in there. So was Earl. Here's Sanchez. And Kimball is still out on that right-hand side. Good play by him. Coton doesn't get there. Earl's header is blocked by Edgehill. Now it scales. Sanchez again. Wimbledon with some storming pressure. Now this is going to get loaded in again, there's no doubt about that. Vinny's come over. They can wipe the ball a little bit. 
Well, I've seen them score countless goals like this, Wimbledon. They look for the knock-on at the near post and the goal at the far. Is that the plan? Aim towards Sanchez, who doesn't win it. Edge Hill is the winner in the air this time. Wimbledon about the tempo, Andy. Yeah, well, look, the one thing they love to do is when they get a team back in the 18-yard box, is keep them there, Ian. And for about the first time tonight, they've been able to do that for the last four or five minutes. Here's a chance. It's actually Fashionu at the back post that gets the header. Robbie L goes for the first one. There's Fashionu, and there's the block. Now, John Fashionu, he's got three goals already this season. And that £125,000 they paid for him back in 1986 was uh, pretty good value, wasn't it? I see. But I think he's given them value for money, hasn't he? Had a lot of injury problems last year, Fashionu, but uh, all that behind him now. Shot so far, Wimbledon 6, Manchester City 1. City had a bright beginning, but they haven't produced much by way of menace since the first five or ten minutes. Wimbledon just starting to take control, you feel. Kimball. Edge Hill getting this one away. See, if you defend deep against Wimbledon, then that's the one thing that they can do. They can get pressure on you and keep it, and they're happy to do that. That's why I sometimes think that the, the policy that Tottenham used last year, when perhaps they gambled a little, but they were confident that they had the pace to deal with Holdsworth and Fashionu over the top. And I think that's less of a risk than the threat of Fashionu in the air at the edge of the 18-yard box, knocking defenders over, getting little touches, and then Earl and Holdsworth and people running off him. Another free kick will be hoisted long in the Wimbledon fashion. Jones looking to knock it on, McMahon gets it away. Barton out to Alan Kimball. Here's Laurie Sanchez, and here's Vinnie Jones! Great play from Sanchez. Assessed the situation so quickly. He obviously thought he was getting squeezed out, but look at that death barrel touch. And the only thing Vinny did wrong for me there is he, he goes near post. When across the goalkeeper on a wet night like tonight, anything could happen. Sanchez long. Fashionu nodding it on very well for Holdsworth. And some good defending by Kernahan. Now this is a dangerous patch in the match for Manchester City. We can't get out in. They can't get out or they don't want to come out. This, whether they're happy to defend along the 18-yard line, I really do think it's a dangerous policy to adopt against Wimbledon. Went on, but there's nobody there. Coming up on Sky Sports on Wednesday night, don't miss it. Big World Cup night, we've got Norway against Poland for you live in England's group, of course, and San Marino versus Holland as well. Here in the FA Carling Premiership, Wimbledon nil, Manchester City nil. Coming up to 37 minutes on the clock. That's Fitzgerald with the clearance. And Kernahan there again for Manchester City. He's been very cool back there. Edge Hill. Flitcroft. Edge Hill coming wide. In the middle, a Sheeran and Quinn. Kimball got back to stop it. Flitcroft again. Linking up with the other youngster, Sheeran. Cool Brunendijk with that nice educated left foot of his. And McMahon, good ball, picking out Sheeran, almost threads away through until Scale stepped in. Well, that's about the first time in 15 minutes that City have managed to put more than two or three passes together. And that's been the difference, they've been unable to get hold of the ball. And when that happens, Wimbledon looked the better side. But that little clip we've just seen shows that if City can dominate the game by, with possession, then they'll certainly benefit from that. It's 
a very tough away fixture for Brian Horton's side probably the biggest test they've had since he became the manager they've won two for him so far and there he is I think he would probably regard a point as a useful one tonight but they may sniff out something more than that Wimbledon really can be a handful. Last year, worth remembering, they won 1-0 at Manchester United and at Liverpool. They knocked Aston Villa out of the cup on penalties. And they beat Norwich City, who are up there in championship contention, 3-0 here. There are the two men plotting it all, Joe Kinnear and his assistant, Terry Burton. Fashion is back header. Holdsworth is in there. Good debut for Alan Kernahan so far back there, Andy. Solid. No problems at all, Ian. He's dealt with everything that's come his way quite well. And certainly after, what, 40 minutes this first half, he'll be well satisfied. But against Wimbledon, the way they play, it's a long way to go. Here's Earl. Trying to find a way through. The chance is still on as well, but into the side netting. Well, I said if he keeps making those runs, it won't be long until he opens his account. And this is as close as he's come. Again, he's the one. Goes past Steve McMahon. Goes past Edgehill, but the angle's very tight. It's always going to be difficult from there. But you see his run coming from the right of the screen. Look at the determination that it takes to get through there. But the angle, very tight. Here is Kernan. Fashionu. Now Barton, who's popping up in all sorts of positions. Joseph. That's a good pace he ran from him. Can't keep it in play, Roger Joseph. He's unlucky there, Ian. Did the hard thing very well, getting past Simpson. He just pushed it too far in front of him. Real dedicated pro, Roger Joseph. He was the first Wimbledon player to arrive Tonight, about two hours and 15 minutes before the kickoff, he was the first man out on the pitch, warming <laughs> up as well. Real enthusiast. Again, that uh, same ploy by Manchester City. Quinn knocking on and hoping to pick up Sheeran, but it hasn't worked so far. Well, you need more options, in my opinion. Fashionu on to Holdsworth. He does well to keep it in play for Barton. Lots of men in the middle waiting for it, and the deflection for a corner. Looks a handy player, that uh, Warren Barton. And they picked up the £300,000 from Maidstone. Injured a lot of last season, but an integral part of the Wimbledon side, where they've been going so well this year. Corner kick is flipped on. Quinn was back there to get it away. Vinnie Jones trying to engineer some opening for the cross. Kimball back to Sanchez. And the flick header from Holdsworth. Nice play. Control. Didn't rush to play it in. Picked out the passes. Walked it to Sanchez. I think Tony Corton's always got this covered. It looks really close, but the keeper untroubled. It's a difficult header. Not easy at all. Here's Fitzroy Simpson. Gary Flitcroft. Simpson again. Edge Hill on the overlap. Not such a good ball by the 18-year-old, but he hasn't done an awful lot wrong. It's a, a debut he can look back on so far with some pride. Kernahan cut out by Fitzgerald and then Vinnie Jones completing the clearance 
Wimbledon who've kept clean sheets in three of their seven games so far it's not a bad record City haven't looked much like denting it Flickcroft, Quinn pulled away from the defenders Flickcroft saw it and the idea was good if not the execution in the end the idea was very good but had he delayed it a fraction of a second later then the right back edge hill was flying up into this huge gap on this near side and he could have just rolled it to him but the idea was right it was a positive idea Bart was being pushed by Brightwell that's what you don't want to do is invite unnecessary pressure upon yourself certainly this late in the half because the one thing you know they'll put players up they'll load it up there Kimball again right well clearing up the problem he himself had created in center field by giving away the free kick Edgehill's clearance to Simpson, but the ball keeps coming back. Vinnie Jones, and here's Holdsworth. Well, he was in space. Lovely ball. Dean Holdsworth does pick up some lovely positions in the area. Look, makes his mind up really early. Alan Kerner in the 15, playing everybody onside there. Whether that's not knowing his teammates and that the way they hold the 18-yard line. But he dropped off, played Holdsworth offside, onside. And it's what, about six inches too high. Well, we're in the time now that the referee is added on for stoppages and injuries. And Wimbledon have been pushing forward with ever-increasing pressure here. Ed Schill giving that to Fitzgerald. Here's McMahon. City will probably welcome the respite of the half-time whistle and a chance to go in, get some fresh instructions, maybe regroup a little bit. The only instructions I would be giving them if I was Brian Hawk would be pass the ball. Keep it and pass it. You've looked a different side when you've done that. The half-time whistle goes. No goals in the first half, a fine debut by this young man, Richard Edgehill. Still all to play for here at Selhurst Park. It's Wimbledon nil, Manchester City nil, with all the analysis to come at half-time. Welcome back to the Monday Night Football. No goals at half-time, Wimbledon nil, Manchester City nil. That's half the job done for City, Malcolm Allison. But uh, the way they played at different times, they'll fancy it, won't they, still? Well, I think early on they were very confident. Uh, just the last 15 minutes, they, they got a little bit of confusion in their game and they got crowded in the 18-yard box, never came out, and they should have come out much quicker. On, two, on a couple of free kicks as well, they should have come out. But uh, if they start off with the confidence they started off in the first half, they, they'll do well. There's the cheerleader. <laughs> he's all dressed up tonight as well. Where's his, where's his cap? Where's his bomber jacket? Oh, he's on the television, you see. Uh, oh, he thinks he's a superstar now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, autograph or two. Just an interesting thing, Phil Neal and I at Coventry, we find it difficult, Richard, for 15 minutes. We have to disappear sometimes. We've ended up in toilets, corridors, washing rooms, because it's now a long time for managers to talk to players and to be able to keep their um, emotions controlled and everything for 15 minutes. But uh, it is difficult. You know, Phil and I have looked for different rooms to instill different things into the lads at half times. But, uh, be interesting to see what Joe Kinnear, Terry Burton and uh, David Moss and Brian Horton said at half-time to the players. Well, here we go again. We're about to find out. Let's rejoin our commentators, Andy Gray and Ian Dark. Thank you, Richard. Andy and I actually were just having a laugh up here. There's a message that keeps going up on the electronic scoreboard <laughs> saying, would Inspector Candlish please report to the control room as the owner of the pot plant has been located. <laughs> I mean, who brings a pot plant to a football match, Andy? We did see it was raining rather than a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the day of the Triffids. <laughs> anyway, it's Wimbledon who are going to get us underway. No substitutions at half-time. Warren Barton. Back to Kimball, who seems to have the job of taking all the set pieces and launching those long balls forward. 
Fashionu nodding that one down to Holdsworth. That's away by David Brightwell. Quinn on to Grunendijk. And it's uh, given away by City. Curl getting this one away to McMahon, who took a knock there off the ball from Vinnie Jones, and the referee was two yards away. No substitutions, as you say, Ian, but I noticed at half-time that Andy Clark spent the whole of the half-time period warming up. He stayed out on the pitch. The Willard Jokinier is, is saying, like, let's give it five or ten minutes. If we don't get a goal, then perhaps we could see Andy Clark very quickly in the second half. He also has Gary Blissett he could call on as well. Meanwhile, it's City attacking. Vinnie Jones, who, whatever his critics may say, he does get through a mountain of work in the centre of that midfield for Wimbledon. Become a bit of a cult figure. He's getting married as well quite soon. Wish him well. Vinny winning this one as well. On towards Dean Holdsworth. One or two appeals from the crowd, but only the crowd for a handball in there. Wimbledon creating nearly all the chances in that first half. One or two of their players, too, who are due a goal, like Holdsworth and Robbie Earl. Here is Holdsworth now. Only uh, Teddy Sheringham and Les Ferdinand outscored him for league goals in last year's Premier League. City on the attack with Flitcroft here. McMahon in support, playing that anchor role in the City midfield, and that's not a pass that will live long in his memory. That's poor play, actually, because they had the momentum there to carry on the attack, and then everything just ground to a halt. Vinnie Jones with the throw. Kernahan with another important interception, but Barton has a chance here for the cross. And once more, Kernahan giving away the corner. And once again, Alan Kimball's making his way over to take it. Well, no wonder Joe Kinnear has such a high regard for this fellow, Alan Kimball, because he's become the dead ball specialist a lot of teams won't do that you know you bring your left back over to the right side of the pitch to take a corner no matter how good they are you just feel there's such a distance to get back as the ball breaks out quickly Fashionu and Earl are both on the goal line Jones is near post he's aimed towards Jones he's won it and so nearly an own goal by Alan Carnahan three kick in he's given against Denny Jones I didn't see much wrong in here as it comes in, he's given a free kick against Vinny there. He's saying he pushed Fitzroy Simpson. You see the left arm comes up there into the back. I don't think that's a free kick. I think the referee was a bit kind to them there. But that's his decision. It was uh, perilously close had it been allowed to stand. Curl scales away for Wimbledon. We look pretty secure at the back. Earl knocking this long, but easy for Tony Coton, who must be one of the most unluckiest footballers in the country not to win an England cap. He's a very good goalkeeper, and I know uh, Peter Reid, his former manager at City, felt he was the best in the country. But others will have their own opinions, of course. Edge Hill into Grunendijk, the Dutchman who used to play for Ajax. Jones in hard, but fair. And Holdsworth going down under Grunendijk's challenge. Wimbledon will have a free kick. He's already been booked, Grunendijk. Not that you'd, I think, describe him even in your wildest imagination as a hard man. Yet another Wimbledon free kick. Again, it's Kimball that takes it. And in there is Earl. 
Wimbledon won the corner, but the referee says that Coden was being pushed by Dean Holdsworth. We see the difficulty in dealing with it. I think it's Gronendijk who gets ahead. No, it's not his fight. It's, a, it's another good... But whether it's a good defensive header or whether it's a lucky defensive header is debatable, Ian. But they got the free kick again. Joseph scrapping with Simpson. And Vinnie Jones going in for a bit of wrestling with Simpson off the ball, unspotted by the referee. I think you can see they'll win the game's bitty, and there's no real flow to it. You really do fancy Wimbledon as this side. That's why Manchester United have got to be strong. They've got to be confident and strong enough to, to attempt to put passes together. Edshill's ball down the line, aimed for Sheeran, who hasn't had too much joy out of that Wimbledon defence so far. Nick Collins has some news at touchline for us. Just quickly, uh, Ian, to tell you that uh, Brian Horton's called upon Manchester City to be more adventurous and up the tempo in the second half. Joe Kinney is worried about uh, his midfield. I'll tell you more in a moment. Do carry on, Nick. Well, basically, he feels they're not playing as well as they have been in recent matches. He's concerned that Richard Edgehill is getting too much space, so in the second half, look out for Alan Kimball to take him on more. In Kinnear's words, it's to see who's best between the two. One last thought, as the Wimbledon team came out for the start of the second half, the ghetto blaster was booming out a record uh, called uh, Keep uh, Up uh, The uh. Pressure. That's what they're trying to do. Thanks a lot, Nick. Nick Collins with uh, all the latest news from inside the two camps. Well, <laughs> Vinny, you can't keep him out of the action. One wag joking at half-time that he'd come in with a terrible gash leg and he didn't know who it belonged to. <laughs> it's only a joke, Vinny, honest. <laughs> it's Kernahan. Good solid debut from the man signed from Middlesbrough for Manchester City. And Manchester City have had an increasing amount of defending to do as well. Vinny's long throw this time. Fashionu nodding this one on. Barton's in there. And here's Earl! And a great, great save from Tony Coton. Tremendous stuff from the City goalkeeper. The movement straight out the Wimbledon coaching manual. Launched it to the area. One or two touches. Robbie Earl does nothing wrong. Super volley. As you say, Tony Coton playing with such confidence is equal to it. But just watch how well Earl hits this. Not a lot of space to hit it into, and Coton's equal to it. Here's Barton. And this time Earl has scored! He's got his first goal of the season. Wimbledon lead by a goal to nil. City could do nothing about that one. The goal scorer is Robbie Earl. I said if he keeps getting in there, it won't be long until he gets his first goal of the season. The push out looking for offside. He's not offside, and that's a simple tap-in. They come out on mass, actually. One light blue jersey stays in there. And because of that, the rest of the Wimbledon team are onside. And they've got the breakthrough, to be fair, that they have threatened from about the 25th minute onwards in this game. Well, I think you have to say, from a neutral standpoint, it did look as if the goal might be coming. Earl, who'd been denied and must have been wondering what he'd have to do to score this season after that save by Coton, is there with a bits and pieces goal on the far post. And now here's Fashadu. Wimbledon could be on their way here into the top four. If they can get two more, they'd be in the third place behind Manchester United and Arsenal. Here's Vinnie Jones. Simpson clearing it. It's a tough, tough job for an injury hit Manchester City, this. When you consider that they could field a defence full of the players that they're missing tonight, which might read Ian Brightwell, Andy Hill, Michel Vonk and uh, Terry Phelan. You'll know the kind of problems that Brian Horton's had. That's Vinnie Jones knocking this one on. Fashionu down, he's looked sharp, Holdsworth. Now the goal scorer, Robbie Earl. Oh, 
Earl again. There's a confidence about Wimbledon. And now they're playing a bit of football as well on the floor, knocking it short. Scott Fitzgerald getting that one away. Jones again, knocking this one forward. Well, Wimbledon beaten only once at Sheffield United this season. Nobody's managed to beat them here. They've had draws against Chelsea and Villa. Here's the goal again, Andy. Watch it again. You see it there, in fact. I think it was Alan Kernahan, the new boy. And as I say, when you've got players making debuts in there, and they're not tuned in to the way that a defence plays, Ian, you can have mistakes. And I think that's all that happened there. Manchester City obviously have policy when a corner's rolled out there to the edge of the 18-yard box that they push out to the six-yard box. I think it was Alan Kernahan who didn't push out, played everyone else on side, and Rob Hill has a simple task of tapping it in. Tough job for Manchester City now as Vinnie Jones knocks this forward, and those of you who probably don't see very much of Wimbledon probably getting a good idea now of the kind of pressure they're able to exert on teams. Here's the goal again. Here we go, they, they all go out in, see what I mean, but look at 15, who's in there with John Fashman, the other debutant behind them there. The two lads unfamiliar with the way that the City defence push out are caught. And just sneaked through to Robbie Earl, who was first to react on that far post. Manchester City going to be able to do about this the first thing they need to do Ian, is get hold of the ball Curl hitting this one long aimed towards Niall Quinn but that hasn't worked has it for them that tactic tonight the long ball to Quinn it hasn't because it, it, the only option they've had off Quinn has been Mike Sheeran I'd quite like to see Gary Flickcroft be brought into the centre midfield area for a little while because he is one lad who will gamble on Niall Quinn winning it and that would give him a double option of Sheeran and Flickcroft there but it's very difficult for him to gamble from the wider area that he's playing in midfield Oh, he's a good player Robbie Earl there's a few clubs who'd like to sign him Kimball I know Ron Accident tried to get him to Villa when he was leaving Port Vale to come here, I think it was, wasn't he? And he just delayed his decision a little bit too long. And I think he's always regretted the fact that he didn't get Robbie L to Aston Villa. Well, I think all the money that's now flooding into the Premiership has meant that Wimbledon haven't had to sell and Earl stays at Selhurst Park. Barton Long is fashion to attacking and an important defensive header from David Brightwell to deny him on the far post. Otherwise... Big Fash would have been in there. You see what John does right to your screen? There's nothing more than just pull onto the shoulder of the last defender. And if that ball's got a yard more height on it, then Fash has got a simple task of heading it in. That's all he's looking to do. Just pull on the back post and attack the ball. Well, here it goes. Same again. Exactly the same lineup. Vinnie Jones near post. Earl on the line. Fashion has gone to the back post. That's a bit of a variation this time. And that's so, the reason why, because Niall Quinn had planted himself right at that near post area, Ian. It's not away yet. Sanchez trying to work an angle and scales in the end. Tonight's crowd at Selhurst Park. Let's have a look at it. The lucky number is 8,481, which is above average for Wimbledon. Good to see the crowds in the big league up by something like 17% this year. Upbeat mood. Gronendijk. That's aimless. That's aimless, and that's not going to get them back in the game. City's options on the bench. They have the young striker A.D. Mike who scored when he came on as substitute at Swindon and they have another youngster Steve Lomas who'd be coming on for what would be his league debut a midfield player what, what he may be tempted to do 
Ian is bring on Mike who's got pace you see him at the back there stripping off and, and take off a midfield player and play three up front I think with no re real width on either side I think that would be the best option well Mike is going to come onto the pitch pretty soon just as soon as City get the opportunity this might be the man coming off Gruenendijk I saw a number 20 down there it might not be Fitzroy Simpson Brightwell nodded down by Quinn but nobody to take any advantage and he looked around there with an air of almost desperation on his face Quinn frustration it was because that's exactly what was in his, his, his look there worked hard to get the flick and no one running off it Fashion who in on this one and Curl did well now here is Niall Quinn that's good chasing back by Earl to win it back Fashionu again to part, and there's a real spirit and competitiveness about Wimbledon. Joseph's cross, Curl gets it away. What they do, Wimbledon, is they make it such a thoroughly unpleasant experience to play against them here. And AD Mike is going to come on, but not before this is taken. And it comes to Vinnie Jones! Oh, screamer! <laughs> Where did you get that one from, Vincent? Goodness me, did he hit it? But it was only the quickness of the throw. They were very alert, very alive. Manchester City went to sleep, and as this is only half cleared, I tell you what, it won't hit many better than that. Really hits a screamer. This should be a great angle of it. Hits it perfectly. I tell you what, had it not been a little bit wide, that would have been nestling in the top corner. AD Mike, the 19-year-old, is on. Off has gone Alphonse Gruenendijk, the Dutchman, and Mike will be moved up into a forward position. Manchester City have to gamble. Here's Fashionu here. Now, there's one or two people around the country who've even mentioned Fashionu as a possible candidate for the England team. And I know he feels that he and several of his mates suffer because they play for Wimbledon when it comes to international recognition. Brian Hawk makes substitution makes absolute sense and hopefully he'll be looking for that to give him a more attacking option good ball by Barton to find Joseph here Holdsworth is on the near post but Coton was there Wimbledon at the moment are asking every question out there and suddenly Roger Joseph has come to life as an attacking force on this near side as well Look at the way he gets through into all that space and Dean Holsworth is looking to get a near post but the ball fractionally near Tony Corton. Well it has to be said, Wimbledon are full value for their lead. We went down to watch the players train last Friday. Is his shot. And this is... Uh, now looks how close this is. I'll tell you what it did Ooh. do, you don't see it. It just flicks off Steve McMahon, you know. That wonderful camera shot. It just showed it took a slight deflection off Steve McMahon. It's a great shot from Vinnie Jones, really was. Shot so far, 12-1. And this might be another one coming up. Curl getting it away. There are appeals for handball again from the crowd behind the goal nothing asked for by the Wimbledon players significantly well, we've got a great view over here as it bounces away from him and suddenly he's under pressure I think that's on the chest but you know what home fans are like Same for anything yeah definitely wasn't a penalty I think the replay proved that conclusively it would have been too difficult a decision for the referee anyway it was probably about 20 yards behind them off McMahon for another corner sign in the corner do you see it saying the crazy gang where they take the corners from as if we didn't know where we were here comes the corner kick 
Wynn got it away. Flickcroft got a header in too. Now here's Sheeran. City being penned back and barely allowed out of their own half. Brian Horton's side need a goal, otherwise it'll be the first defeat under his management. They need a breather. They need to do something to stop the pressure upon them. <laughs> Giving it away like that, Ian, that won't do. This is A.D. Mike. Now Simpson. And Brightwell getting forward. And City make anything of this again is aimed towards Quinn who seemed to be pushed and buffeted in there but in the end the free kick I think is given the other way well you could have fooled me because I reckon he took about seven knocks in there before he did anything back I think we'll see that uh, Quinny is the guilty one in there you see that the arms are up he's trying to make a position but there he goes the push on Fitzgerald and that's the one the referee gave a decision on. I think he might feel it was certainly at least six of one and half a dozen of the other. Doesn't matter. Play goes on. Unless you've been, you've been in that situation and you don't know the amount of buffeting that goes on in situations like that. Jones to take it. Aim towards Sanchez. Flipcroft conceding the corner. They can't get a respite, can they, defensively? It's incessant at the moment. This time Bartley is going to take it. In swinging with the right foot. Coton goes up and claims it well. Goalkeeper's had a good night. Played well, Tony Coton. Handled the ball well. No chance for the goal. And everything else has been of top quality. Flicked on by Sheeran towards Quinn. And Scales patching up. Trouble being, there's the one goal in. That's the only disappointing thing that Joe Kinnear will be feeling that having dominated the game for so long, had so much pressure, there's still only one up. Well, they have uh, 22 minutes to add to that. Halfway through the second half is Richard Edgehill. Will be 19 in three days' time. Some birthday present, isn't it, this week? His debut in the top division for Manchester City. Fashion who having a little joke with him there, just off the ball. <laughs> and Sagers, Tony Coton pushing this one forward. Fitzgerald got there. Nobody there at all for Manchester City on that far post. When they have attacked, they really got enough bodies into the penalty area. Look at uh, Sagers here, coming out almost like a sweeper. Earl, now Jones. Holdsworth made a run, Edgehill with the interception for Manchester City. Now Quinn, this looks a bit more promising. Simpson. And it all comes to nothing once more. Had more men forward in the box than they've had for a long time. A.D. Mike, Gary Flickcroft has now moved into a more central role, has got himself forward. And that would have helped Niall Quinn had the ball been provided for him. Up goes Mike and gets there as well. But Scales... Looking very, very solid at the centre of that Wimbledon defence every time Manchester City have attacked. Holdsworth spreads it wide to Roger Joseph, whose first touch is not a good one.
Ooh, Kernahan there in the argument with the cameraman. And I think everything is intact. Those cameras are a bit expensive. So is he, by the way. One and a half million pounds. Well, nothing happening for City at the moment, and that almost symbolised it. Warren Barton. Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald will face some competition for his place now that Brian McAllister is near to fitness again. But uh, as long as Wimbledon are playing like this and aiming towards the top six, you can't see Joe Kinnear making many changes to this side. He's been very pleased with the way they've started and uh, hardly surprising. That's Fitzgerald again. Flitcroft. City at the moment just a bit ragged, Andy. Yeah, as I say, until they get hold of the ball, there's not an awful lot they're going to be able to do in this game. They've had a spell when they've given it away very needlessly. Keith Curl will keep competing and competing all the way. He's a great example in that city defence. Here he is again. He knows all about the kind of threat that Wimbledon pose. It's good work by Quinn. Forward by Scales and his Holdsworth. Question who's in space in the middle. If Holdsworth can get it down and find him. Still Dean Holdsworth. That's nice football from him. And Steve McMahon with a cushioned header to clear it all up. Again, the problem arose. It's getting to know you. Alan Kern had deeper in this situation than, than Keith Kerr probably wanted him to be or is used to having his, his centre back alongside him. And that's understandable. They've only been at the club a day or so. Wimbledon looking a tough nut to crack. There still is only the one goal in it. And all the time it's like that, City will have hope. Here's Barton. Oh, that's good play from him. And too long for Earl on the far post. That's a lovely piece of play by Warren Barton to set that up in the first place. Sagers under a bit of pressure and takes no chances. <laughs> It's the first bit of pressure you've been on. Look at now, Quinn. He's gesturing to the rest of his team to get up here and support. David Brightwell. Well, if Brian Horton wanted to decide to put a bit more pace into the game, the second half, he needs to, he'll be disappointed with the response because they haven't done that at all. Must have been times when Manchester City felt as if they were trying to fly a paper plane into a hurricane. Wimbledon pushing forward with such intensity at times in the second half. Good ball from Earl. Look how much space Barton's got. Joseph's on the overlap. Goes it alone in the end. Acres of space for him. Well, he had the acres of space, but that was all due to Roger Joseph's totally unselfish run there. Because then Keith Girl's got a problem. What does he do? Does he close the ball? Does he go with the runner? He had a really difficult decision as a centre back there who was exposed. He gets away with it at the end of the day, but you know, someone in a more instinctive finisher may have made him pay for that. Great run from Roger Joseph, it really was. Totally unselfish. Had a good game, the fullback. Well, Wimbledon have their detractors, that's for certain. But there are a lot of people in the game, too, who rather admire what they've done on slender resources. Now, this is down by Quinn again. Vinnie Jones is there. 
The opposite number four, Steve McMahon, now 32 years of age, launching that forward. Fitzgerald wanted in the air but took a knock as he did so. He's on his feet now, though. Here's John Frashenu, off on another marauding run. Jones, good ball, that for Barton. He's got the pace to make something of it as well. And two Wimbledon players in there waiting. Edgehill with the clearance. Well, I've got out of jail again. Because Holmes off the nail. You watch it. A two against one at the top of the screen. Barton does ever so well to even reach this cross. And had he missed out, the only defender in there, young Edgehill. And he'll surely have paid for that. But it's still only one. Manchester City must think, well, we might only need one chance, and we've seen it time and time again. Teams dominate a game. I mean, just look at that corner count, it sure illustrates it. I've only one goal to show for it. A team gets one chance against them and makes them pay. Kimball takes it, Quinn gets it away. Jones felt he was pushed, but it was a bit of a half-hearted appeal. Now Sheeran and Roger Joseph making sure that nothing more came of that. On side, Vinnie Jones, who's having a very good match now, really. On towards Fashionu to Holdsworth. And Earl on the turn, he's got another chance here for a second. Was he brought down there? No, says the referee. Curl's challenge on Robbie Earl, and that'll be worth looking at again. Oh, now Vinnie Jones body checking Simpson in the middle of the field. And Simpson. To his credit, got up quickly and didn't make any meal of that. Well, we don't need to see Vinnie's again because <laughs> a pretty clear cut that challenge. But it'll be interesting when we get a chance to look back at uh, the Robbie L situation after this free kick. Let's see this Manchester City free kick, then we'll show you again that penalty incident. The penalty claim, anyway. Curl forward up towards Quinn Sheeran! took an inflection off uh, Fitzgerald I think it was for the corner but there was a half chance for Manchester City just an example of what I mentioned two or three minutes ago 1-0 City believe they still got a chance only need to create something only need something to drop for them go their way in that penalty area and all the good work that Wimbledon will have done will be down the drain up goes AD Mike there Fashion who is back to get it away Fitzroy Simpson puts it in there again Wimbledon under a bit of pressure Steve McMahon here still is McMahon and this is the best spell yet for Manchester City it's the only spell from Manchester City in all honesty in the second half two half chances within a minute Robbie L gets the header out of a pack of players and this is where Steve McMahon, he risks getting hurt there from that high tackle, risks getting hurt again from a wild challenge by Fashionu, that slices his shot wide. But here's the other chance, or the penalty claim. Was it or was it not? I, I don't know, I've got some sympathy, whether there's a tangle of legs in there, both of them look as if they're going for it. It would have been a very harsh decision, I think, a penalty there. You can see the referee on the left of the screen, and a very good view of it. Thanks, Andy. Now Vinnie Jones for Wimbledon. This is Earl for Roger Joseph. Barton, who's had a stormer for my money. Don't know what you think, Andy. Warren Barton. Been a lot of, there have been a lot of good performers for, for Wimbledon tonight. Roger Joseph's came more into it. Certainly eye-catchingly as an attacking force second half. Oh, he's out of his area there. And Sagers, it was an eccentric piece of goalkeeping. Because if he'd stayed back, he could have handled it. Instead, City have it with Sheeran, Mike. And I think there are one or two questions going on among the Wimbledon defenders and their goalkeeper there about that. Well, it's Bambi, wasn't it? Dominating the game for so long. And as you say, Hans just needs to step back into his penalty area and pick it up. But they're a weird bunch, these goalkeepers. How many times have we said that throughout the years? Well, <laughs> this last weekend, the Bruce Grobel asked Steve McManaman incident. Extraordinary goings on up there at Goodison Park. Barton trying to close in on this, no real chance against Tony Coton. Coton, who saved a penalty 
in uh, Manchester City's last away win at Swindon. That was important from John Moncur. Manning well. What we have to remember from the Swindon game, it was a late, late rally at the, in that game as well, Ian. We were behind for a long spell, I think three goals in the last 16 minutes. That's right. That got them the victory, so certainly evidence there that suggests that they'll stick at it. Quinn attacking this one. Scales just getting his body between Quinn and the goalkeeper. There's Jones. Fitzgerald forward. Fashionu. Who's on the... So we read, £2,500 a goal, up to eight, and then £5,000 a goal. Fashionu trying to get on the back of this one. Curl, again, some calls for a penalty, but really Curl was only doing there what Scales had done at the other end. It was a good piece of defending. Hey, no wonder Fash is on penalties, eh? No wonder he was so vehement and he's acclaimed for that penalty. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure whether the, the figures as reported are exactly right, but he's certainly on a healthy old bonus. 2,500 a goal was the figure that they were quoting. <laughs> it's Kernan. Quinn nods it on, and this could be a bit of a chance for Simpson, and there was a push-off anyway. Cross Heidi, Fitzroy Simpson, on the little knockdown. But that's what they haven't had enough of for me. As the options, you watch Simpson come up there, it's a flick on there, the flag goes up immediately, and he's offside. But they need more of that. Fitzroy Simpson, he'd made a good run, trying to get ahead of his strikers. It was a tightish decision, but uh, Linesman's certainly in a much better position than Andy Gray and I. <laughs> but, no, Kieran Barrett, the referee, wants this pulled back to where Fashionu and Curl were having their little playful argument. Well, Wimbledon can sense victory, and Manchester City are getting more and more desperate. And it's, it's a classic example of a team holding out for a win. They're, they're, they're starting to accept a little bit of pressure from City. And that can be dangerous. Barton. Now Fashionu is one-on-one -on -one with Carnahan here. He's going to hold it up and wait for some support. Jones providing a little. And Barton, but the flag is up. That'll be offside anyway. Now, what about that earlier penalty uh, appeal again, Andy? Here it is. We get a different view of it here. Robbie Ellis is the one who controls the ball now. It's Keith Curl who comes in. There he goes. The leg comes across there. Look, it's a bit of a tangle there. I think, in all honesty, seeing it from that angle there, no claims for a penalty. Quinn, on by A.D. Mike, flipped off, Scales, who's barely put a foot wrong back there, City beginning to come more and more into it, right well with the cross, Quinn was in there, and Wimbledon are having to breathe a little more anxiously now, Fashionu trying to run Keith Curl, but he is one of the paciest defenders in the land. <laughs> and the verbal is going on between them. The two old teammates. Well, if Wimbledon can hold on to this, they'll take their tally up to 15 points and move into the top six place that they've been threatening to occupy. Edge Hill, long for Quinn who turned well, and the whistle's gone, the whistle's gone. It's always a difficult one for a referee that, when it's hoisted like that, and two big lads are, are tussling for it. Now Quinn's trying to get his body, you look, he's feeling for him, but you see the left arm comes out there. And I think that was the thing that concerned the referee. Coming up on Wednesday night on Sky Sports, World Cup action in England's group, vital game, Norway against Poland, it's live for you. We're on the air at 6.45, and we'll have San Marino against Holland as well. It's a real bumper World Cup night. That's Wednesday, here tonight, 
Wimbledon lead by a goal to nil inside the last five minutes at Selhurst Park. Well, they're worthy of the lead. There's no doubt about that, Ian, but the job is not complete. Well, Andy Gray had a little bet before the start of play. I did, didn't I? You said uh, Robbie Earl's uh, going to uh, score tonight. He's due one, and, uh, well, he's been right again. It's a pity I'm not a betting man, though, isn't it? You must get sick of being right all the time, Andy. No, you get used to it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Barton. Holdsworth making a run. He's another one who's due a goal, as we were saying earlier, Dean Holdsworth. Barton. With the cross, his curl with the head up. Lovely cross that was, Ian. Into a perfect area for someone to attack it, but no one did. Flags up, it'll be a Manchester City free kick, but all the time the ball is down in that half, Wimbledon will be quite happy. Look at the clock ticking away, top left of your picture, inside the last four minutes of normal time. But can Manchester City provide some late drama? Well, they've sent Alan Kernahan up as well. Fashionu is back defending. Wimbledon now taking the view largely of what we have, we hold. Can't really blame them for that either. Barton's taken a knock on the head there in that challenge with McMahon. And he's groggy. McMahon pitching it forward again. Now here's Quinn. AD Mike closing in, Sager's off his line, and his defenders are a good deal happier about him now. And they'll just tell him to hold it, take the time. Only a couple of minutes left now. And this is a big victory if it stays like this for Wimbledon, it really is. And it might just be what they need to actually see themselves in black and white. Up there rubbing shoulders with the Manchester United's Arsenal's and Aston Villas of this world in. I can do as much for you as anything. Well, they have this sort of shabby little kick outfit image, Joe Kinnear's side, but he was showing us around the training facilities they have now. It's very much a Premier League type setup. Wimbledon are going to make a late substitution here. Off goes Warren Barton, who just took that knock. Andy Clark is going to come on. Barton's had a great game, and he's getting very very warmly applauded by the Wimbledon fans so on comes Andy Clark the 26 year old pacey wide man five goals from him last year <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the great moments that that header must have gone about 50 yards well he learned from his last header didn't he of course it went nowhere he thought well I'm not getting shouted out by this lot again Mm. He's doing an audition for John Scale's job, I think. Now City. As Barton trudges off to the dressing room. With very little time to do something about it. Kernahan. Mike is dispossessed. throw is the decision now Benny Jones kicked the ball away there and well I've seen players booked for that this season Kieran Barrett just having a word with him but it would have been a needless booking really Fashionu that's out of play now the whistle <laughs> Just going there, and once more, Kieran Barrett just having a word with Fashionu about knocking it away too. But Wimbledon trying to make those seconds disappear until we're past 90 minutes. But here's Robbie Earl. Can they embroider this with a second goal? The substitute, Andy Clark, looking to make an instant impression. Still not away. Simpson is still not away. 
Down again for holds with Curl. Getting it clear. And Vinnie Jones taking it into the corner and trying to buy some time. And be pulling back quite well there. Well, that's the best way to protect the 1 0 victory. Play the game in your opponent's half. Oh, and for... now a real challenge between Jones and McMahon. And what's the referee going to do about that? An ill tempered exchange. After the ball had gone, Jones came in on McMahon, who reacted very angrily. Well, he's been treading thin ice, Vinny, for a couple of minutes. We can see this. I mean, that's... Well, there's nothing nice you can say about that. I'm no surprise that Steve McMahon reacted the way he did. Vinny Jones will definitely get booked. I just wonder if he'll take any action against Steve McMahon for his reaction. It looks not. Vinny goes in the book, and quite honestly... He can't really complain about it, can he? Such a shame because he's played very, very well for Wimbledon. He's got it away this time. We're in injury time. Curl. Towards AD Mike, who gets it down. Flickcroft. And Scott Fitzgerald was back there defending. It was a vital interception, but... But Manchester United, uh, Manchester City with this one last effort maybe to salvage something. We well, better get a move on because there can't be much time left. Everybody in that penalty area now. Here comes the corner kick. Sagers with a vital punch away. And there goes the final whistle. Wimbledon go climbing dramatically up the table into the top six. That's what it means to them. Robbie Earl's goal wins it for Joe Kinnear's side. Tony Book shaking hands there. And Wimbledon's combative spirit, their will to win. And you have to say, really, that over the 90 minutes, it was a deserved victory because they had most of the chances, most of the pressure. Robbie Earl, with his first goal of the season, was the difference between the sides in the end. Tremendous spirit in this camp. Celebrations among the Wimbledon fans. And they've won here. And by the way, we're back here next Monday to follow this continuing Wimbledon story when they play Jerry Francis's Queen's Park Rangers side. Sam and Mam's going to be happy. When they go in the dressing room afterwards, they apparently all go into a sing-song after they've won and sing, uh, here we go again, happy as can be. The 85-year-old chairman Stanley Reid goes in there they all join in they have a right old knees up and that's part of the Wimbledon spirit that's uh, taken them quite a long way hasn't it Manchester City's first defeat under manager Brian Horton well we always thought it was be his most difficult challenge up the to now Brian Horton was over the uh, average Andy I was just saying Ian it was always going to be his most difficult challenge so far in his three game managerial stint at, at Main Road and I think that was proved tonight I think if they'd have got anything from the game it would have been unwarranted and Wimbledon have put so much into it for me apart from a, a good start from Manchester City but after that Wimbledon dominated the game until they decided six or seven minutes from the end that what we have we hold and that was about the only time in the match that, that City really put them under any pressure. So Wimbledon, for me, fully deserving of the victory. Thank you, Andy. Nick Collins has some of the leading players in the drama to talk to. Thank you, Ian. Yes, I'm with Robbie Earl and Warren Barton. The uh, music's already started yeah. in the dressing room. Uh, I just think everybody is very pleased with tonight's performance and result. Yeah, we needed the three points. We've had a good start to the season. We felt tonight we had to go out and get a win here and put us back in the top six again. Half time, it was goalless. What yeah. kind of things were being said to, to force you on in the second half? Um, we just sorted the formation out a little bit. We were a little bit stretched in the first half. We got a little bit more compact second half, and we got the rewards penned them in in the second half, and you know we got the goal that we wanted. Let's just bring Warren in here at this stage. Warren, you seem to get a lot of space in that second half. That's right. The, uh, the boss has told me just to stay at wide right, and uh, fortunately enough, I was getting a lot of the ball, and obviously helped Robbie to get his goal. I know Wimbledon players are characterised by their determination, but you must be pretty pleased by the way it's going at the moment. You're right up there now, aren't you? Yeah, that's, that's right. We're, uh, we're very confident and we've got a good team spirit. Obviously, you can hear it. And we've just got to keep this going all the way through the season. 
OK, well, Robbie, the goal that decided it came just a few minutes after half-time. Let's uh, give you a chance to have a quick look at it. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I just remember it played a short corner and one whipped it in. And I just went behind fast for the pieces and managed to just get in front to it. So, yeah, it's the first one of the season. That's right. We were saying, actually, you were probably due a goal because yeah, uh, you hadn't uh, got one yet. You know, I've been usually one in three, one in four through my career. So, you know, the lads have been ribbing me a little bit to get a goal. And tonight was a good time, you know, to get one. But we've been getting one nils in the last three games now. We've been solid at the back. We always feel like we'll score a goal at the other end. How strong is the Wimbledon belief that you can actually do something like finish in the top four or six this season? Well, I think, you know, the club were given a big lift when Scale you know, didn't go at the, in the summer. Everybody stuck together. Looks like we've got a good squad together. He's brought players in, and we feel, you know, we can show what we'll do now this season. Well, wish you luck. Before you go, must just bring in Sam Herman, the Wimbledon owner, who's going to present the Carling Man of the Match award to Warren Barton. Well done, Warren. Well, well, well done, baby. Well done. <laughs> Well done, baby. 